Hey guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. As a pure scent enthusiast, I get asked often if I can tell someone whether or not their Pearson is rejecting or migrating or if I have any idea what's going on with it. Let me reiterate, I am a Pearson enthusiast, I'm not a professional, so the following video should not be used as a way to diagnose yourself. Always seek professional advice. I'm just trying to lay out some information. For me personally, I never quite understood what the difference between rejection and migration was. You always kind of use them together. It's almost like keloid and Pearson bumps. A lot of people use those terms interchangeably, which is incorrect. Same with rejection and migration. They're used kind of interchangeably, but they really shouldn't be because they're not the same thing. So for today's video, I thought I would discuss rejection and migration. Which one is happening to you? Maybe not those exact words, but you, you get what I'm saying. So the first thing that we need to do in order to determine if your Pearson is rejecting or if it's migrating or if it's just having a problem is to define what a rejection is and what a migration is. So first up, rejection. No one wants rejection of any kind, but especially not in a Pearson format. So for rejection, it's kind of a cause, you know, like cause and effect. It's kind of like a cause. It happens because of a migration. Rejection typically happens when something foreign has entered your body and your body's like, well, I don't like this at all, get out. So when your body decides it doesn't like something, its way of dealing with it is just pushing it out. It's like, get out, we don't like you, your health concern, go. So basically it's kind of like when your body's sick and it's trying to fight against an infection or a parasite or a virus. It's trying to protect you, your body, so it, it forces it out or attempts to. In a situation of Pearson's, this can result in the body just quite literally pushing the jewelry through the skin to the surface and getting it as far away as possible. Something to think about though, a lot of people will tell you otherwise, but it honestly depends on the type of piercing that you've gotten. Just because one piercing rejects doesn't mean all of them will. So say your eyebrow piercing decided to reject, that doesn't mean that say a tragus piercing will. It really depends on the part of your body and how your body is going to react to a foreign object entering it. A surefire symptom of rejection is when you all of a sudden can see the jewelry up against the skin not where it was originally pierced. No other way to put that. So, moving on to what migration is. Migration is a symptom of a rejection. So this is how it all starts. Your body is still sitting there going like, oh my God, this thing is inside of me. I don't like it. We need to get it out as soon as possible. Again, much like when you're ill, your body fights off an infection, off a virus. It does everything in its power to keep you healthy. It has determined at this point that the foreign object in this case jewelry, is a health hazard and it wants it gone. So the first thing it's gonna do is trying to shift it from where it is currently. So migration happens during a rejection from the body. The rejection is like the entirety of it, migration is like the start of it. So during migration, this is where your body is like, all right, foreign object is here. Maybe if we move it here or here or here, it'll be better. So that's when you start noticing that the jewelry shifts in a way where it's no longer in the same spot that it was previously. Essentially, it's the body's hope that if it moves it to a new site, that it'll kind of clear up any health issues that it deems may occur in its current spot. If you notice in a migration, you can stop a full-blown rejection if you remove the jewelry in time. If you're noticing that the jewelry is shifting or it's starting to become more visible, or you're noticing that it hangs differently, like the jewelry itself, you can stop a full-blown rejection by just removing the jewelry. If you don't remove it in time, it can become a full-blown rejection and it can actually leave even more scar tissue behind than it already has during the migration. Something to keep in mind, migration can be a pretty slow process and it can happen at any time. Most people will tell you that it can only happen for like a new Pearson, but it can happen months or even years after you've received a Pearson, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> you could have had your belly button pierced for two years and then all of a sudden your body's like, oh, nope, I don't like that anymore. Let's try and shift it somewhere. Unfortunately, it can happen. So. Possible signs of a migration, though not always the case. Like I mentioned, you'll notice that the jewelry kind of droops or it hangs or it just 
doesn't sit as well as it did before. It kind of just, it just doesn't look like it is doing what it needs to. You also may experience soreness that just never goes away, as well as redness that just never goes away. No matter what you do and no matter how well you deal with your aftercare, it just doesn't wanna work out. You may notice that the Pearson site itself has become larger than it was originally. So if you get your eyebrow done, all of a sudden you just notice that the holes are bigger or or that it that's when the jewelry starts hanging. That could be a sign of migration. You may also start noticing that you can see the jewelry pushing up against the skin, like right up against the skin. Let me reiterate, healed piercings can migrate. Healed piercings can reject. Just because you've had a Pearson for five years doesn't mean the body can't turn around and decide, hmm, I don't like this anymore. Let's get it out. Unfortunately, once migration starts happening, you can't really stop it, but you can keep it from getting worse. The longer the foreign object, in this case the jewelry, has to migrate, the worse the scar tissue can become. If you remove the jewelry early on, if you, if you think you're having a migration or if your piercer says you're having a migration, the earlier on that you remove the jewelry, the better chance you have of, of less scar tissue, of it healing properly, so that maybe you can get it re-pierced in the future. So what piercings are most likely to reject or migrate? Pretty much surface piercings. Now, I will say that some common surface piercings are your navel or your eyebrow. People already know my horror story with my navel piercing. I honestly don't think that was a migration so much as it was just pierced in the wrong spot but I do think my body was like get out this is awful go to make sure that a surface piercing doesn't reject or migrate or or lessens the chance of either happening you have to make sure that you pierce enough skin that the jewelry kind of is able to hold on to it. Surface piercings usually have looser skin. So like, whereas with cartilage piercings, first of all, there's hardly any skin just itself. It's taut enough that the piercing has enough to grab onto and the body can't really push it out because it's got enough there, if that makes any kind of sense. So the reason why you don't typically see eyebrow piercings reject or navel piercings reject is because there's enough skin there for that piercing to kind of encompass that the body will not really push it out because it's just got enough there. Basically, the less skin there is for the piercing to hold on to, the more likely it is to reject or migrate. Surface piercings make it easier for the body to push it out. If there's less skin there, the body's just like, all right, we can easily remedy this. Just go. An example of a surface piercing that has a higher chance of rejection is a nape piercing, and that's on the back of your neck. You know, if you get a piercing on your hips, on your wrists, those also have a pretty high rejection rate because they're so close to the surface of your skin. I mean, there's not a whole lot on your wrist that you can pierce through, and your body will be like, yeah, I don't like that at all. Let's just go. You got to go. Kind of like with keloids or infections or piercing bumps, some people are just more prone to rejections, which is quite unfortunate. Does this mean that if you've had a rejection before that you're prone to it and that you're gonna have it again? Not necessarily, but it's something to take into consideration. If you're more prone to keloids, you're gonna see those more often. If you're more prone to infections because you have sensitivities, you're gonna see them more often. If you're prone to rejections, there's just the potential that you're gonna experience those more often. Like I mentioned, a piercing can reject or migrate years after you've had it. It's unfortunate and it's kind of scary to think about. You know, if you've had a Pearson for five years and all of a sudden your body's just like, I don't like this anymore. I feel like this is a health hazard to my vessel. Let's go. It sucks to, to think that could potentially happen. Again, rejection is a way for your body to protect itself. Anytime your skin is punctured, also keep in mind real fast that your skin is your largest organ. So your body is going to protect it. It is your outer layer that protects you from the outside elements. And when it's punctured, its automatic response is to heal. And if it finds anything that doesn't belong, it wants it gone. So how can you avoid a rejection? Again, some people are just prone to rejections. You can't really help that so much. However, there are a few steps that you can take to kind of lessen your chances of experience a rejection or a migration. Well, I'm not really gonna count them, but the first thing you should do is keep yourself healthy and follow all aftercare procedures. Don't skimp on anything. Don't think, oh, well, I've been doing this for about a week. I think I'm good now. No, keep going 
as your piercer instructed. Also keep yourself healthy. Make sure that you talk with your piercer. Make sure that you do your research before you get a piercing. Find out more about it instead of just willy-nilly going in one day and be like, I want this done just because it looks cool. Do your research. Now, this next one is not always the case, but it can help. Getting a piercing done with a larger gauge can potentially cut down on that risk of rejection. That doesn't mean that you have to stay at that size. So like say you wanna get your navel pierced, that's usually a 14 gauge. Maybe you wanna get it pierced with a 12 gauge. Just, it kind of acts as a buffer and then you can eventually go down to a 14 gauge. I don't know the science behind that, but in my research, that's what I found. Make sure you're using proper jewelry. Don't use anything that's porous or that's cheap because your body is really not gonna like that. Buy the good quality stuff. It's more expensive, I know. We can't always afford the really expensive stuff, but you get what you pay for and it's quality. Also make sure that you are finding a qualified piercer. Don't go to someone's garage and get it done, especially not for a surface piercing. Just, ugh. Find someone qualified. So what happens if your piercing does reject? That sad truth that everyone has the potential to experience. I don't even like thinking about it because that just is horrifying. Once the process has begun, it's really difficult to stop it. Like I mentioned, you can't really stop migration, but you can stop it from becoming a full-blown rejection. If you believe that your piercing is rejecting or if it's just migrating, seek professional help. Do not reach out to those of us on the interwebs who are piercing enthusiasts. Find a professional. We are enthusiastic about piercings and everything and we like seeing them and we like getting them, but we are not professionals. Which is also how I should say, take this video with a grain of salt. This is more just me providing information that I found in my own research. Something else you can do if you are noticing a change and you don't like it, change out the jewelry. If you were pierced with surgical steel, maybe change it up to titanium. That may help remedy the issue. Maybe your body just doesn't like the metal. Like I mentioned, maybe try larger jewelry. This is not always like a surefire method, but it can potentially help you. And another thing you can do, you know, if you notice that your, your piercing is rejected and there's really no coming back from it, you can start using topicals to kind of cut down on the appearance of scars. My personal favorite is bio oil. I'll leave a link to that in the description. I use bio oil for any scarring that I have. Like when I have my weight loss surgery, I've got all those little scars on my stomach. I use bio oil and you can hardly see them. I also use bio oil when I had to remove my belly button piercing because of all that nonsense and you can hardly see the scarring anymore. Scar tissue is still underneath the surface, but the visibility and the appearance of the scars is diminished greatly. Again, if you think that your piercing is migrating or rejecting, please seek professional help. Go to a piercer. It's not always wise to go to a doctor first because they are not trained in that way, if that makes any kind of sense. Kind of like when a piercing is has a full-blown infection, it's better to go see your piercer first to get their thoughts before you head out and get advice from, from anywhere else. Just seek professional help at all times. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything to add about migrations or rejections or if you have had personal experience with either. I'm gonna preemptively say I'm very sorry if you have had experience with either. Sometimes people think like really bad infections are migrations or rejections when they're really just really bad infections. So if you've had a true migration or rejection, let us know in the comments below. Let us know which piercing it was. Again, typically it's surface piercings that have a higher chance of either, but that's not to say that other ones like your tragus or your conch or your rook can't reject or migrate as well. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button wherever it may be because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys! <laughs>